Hello and welcome everybody to our second NVMet webinar about some internals of the NVMet model. And this week it's about building physics. So let me just shortly introduce you about what we're going to do in the next hour. So that's our plan. We have actually two sections. The first section will be like last week, an introductory into the topic of building physics. That means into the theory. Not too deep, but also a little bit, it's more understandable how NVMet sees the buildings, how the buildings interact with the environment. And then after that first um, part, we will go have a little um, question and answer section. So um, if you do have something already for the theory or something is not clear, so just feel free to post your questions then in our Q&A se section. And then once we're finished with that one, we're going to the second part of our today's to, um, webinar, which then will be the um, building physics with NVMet. So with a very um, simple model to have the hands on, how do we construct such a model in NVMet using spaces? How do we do the analysis with Leonardo? And what else can we explore in the data that have been generated with the simulation? And once again, like the second and the first time, we will finish then with a Q&A section um, finishing our webinar um, and summarize all the different um, aspects we have collected, hopefully, about this building physics sections. So let's go straight ahead and start over with the introductory part. So um, Thinking of building physics, so that's just what I just, just told. Um, first of all, I don't know if you have had a look at the e-library in our website. So on the info website, www.envimet.info. So there is the electronic library. Uh, we're just recently updating all that stuff. And there are two papers, which are actually of relevance for our today's webinar. Um, why two papers? Because the building physics is a pretty complicated topic. Um, so we have one paper, part one, that deals with the um, design of the building wall model itself. So how is heat transferred in the model? Um, how does it work? What is the concept? And it also dives into some numerical aspects of the whole thing. So how are the equations solved? Um, how is the Fourier equation solved in time and in, in space? So if you're interested in the mathematics behind the way these equations work in NVMet. So that's probably a good starting point to um, understand the way these things are solved. And the second part of the paper that adds the greening layer to the wall or to the roof. So when I say wall, I also mean roofs because actually for the perspective of the model, a roof is nothing less than a horizontal wall. So there isn't a difference, um, technically speaking, of that. So the second part deals with all the additional complexity that adds to the complete system of building walls if we add um, a green layer to the whole thing. So let's just dive inside of that. And yeah, these are the, the two papers. So they are free for download. So just go to our um, e-library and um, get yourself the information if you would like to know more about the physics and the um, techniques behind it. So let's dive into the, the concept of <clears throat> the wall model. So as you know, NVMet works on a finite difference uh, machine. So that means the environment is split into different um, options, into different um, segments. So just putting off the trigger here. Um, and this is also the case for uh, the walls. And walls can be distributed in three materials, if you like to. We can say material A, B, and C. So this is a compromise between the complexity of a real wall, which can consist of a stone layer, um, an isolation layer, and a, a plaster layer, for example. But you do not need to have three different materials. You can also have walls, of course, just consisting um, out of one material. Nevertheless, um, this is the outside um, of the atmosphere, and this is the inside of the building. And everything that takes place in terms of heat conduction, heat transfer um, in the building wall, this is simulated using a system of seven wall nodes. So there are seven values that are calculated inside 
the wall system, starting with node zero at the very outside facade of the building and ending with node number six at the very inside of the building. So that's actually the wall surface you touch when you are in your living room and think about the, the wall temperature. And the other nodes, one, two, five, these are nodes in the wall system itself in the middle of each layer and at the connection point between two layers. And so for each of these nodes, we will later on see that in Leonardo, we can see how the temperature develops, how um, heat is transferred from the outside into the inside, if the outside is warmer, or of course, transferred back from the inside to the outside, or is stuck in the wall. So that's what we actually do have in most cases, especially in summer, so that we do transport heat during the day from the outer facade into the wall, towards the inside of the building, but not necessarily reaching the inside because it's very, the travel speed is very low and it's got stuck in the wall and then travels back. So these are the effects of less isolated thick walls where you have a heat propagation inside the wall, inside the building that even shifts over the years. So over the year of the um, over the, the seasons of the year, so that you see, oh, inside the building in summer it's cold, inside in winter it's warmer. So um, if you want to use such a wall in Envimet, definitely you have to use um, the database. Otherwise, there is no option on how Envimet could assemble the different material constants, the different physical properties of the layers. So this is supported with um, the database manager. So we will look, have a look at it later on. Um, you know, the database manager always supports you setting up the properties for anything you need for a soil profile, for plants, or in this case, for walls in the database. So you can um, select the three layers. So this is layer one. It's pretty small because it's an isolation layer. It's just one centimeter thick. Layer two, that's a bigger layer, 12 centimeters. In this case, it's another insulation layer. So that's plaster, that's insulation. And layer number three, for example, this is 18 centimeters thick. So that could be concrete in our case. So you have a large collection of materials always already available in the Envimet database. Um, you can, of course, add your own. We probably will have to because on building materials vary quite a lot of in quite a lot of values because depending on what you actually use in your building construction site, you may not find the correct properties in the database, but that's not a problem because you can set up your own properties or modify properties existing in, in the database. So what about the greening system? Well, I said, as I said, the building wall used, uses seven wall nodes, so that's that's not too complicated, it's not too easy either, but it's not too complicated. So that's the bare wall we have just talked about. But what about greening layers? Well, there are actually a thousand ways to green a building wall or a, a building roof. And of course, we have to split them up in a certain way into concepts because we cannot use any combination we think of. So um, we have decided to introduce uh, three different types of greening in Envimet, which should cover most of the practically available solutions to apply greening to your building wall or roof. And option number one, that would be um, a wall with a greening layer attached. So that means there is no substrate. There is just the wall and the greening at the wall. The question is, where does the greening grow? Well, normally it's, for, for example, a, a climbing plant, which comes from the ground, or maybe it's a, a plant that grows basically on the roof and is climbing or falling down um, the facade. So that's option number one. Option number two, that would be something that is growing directly on the wall. So we have a, a system where we have a substrate layer, whatever that substrate is, could be earth, could be some artificial turf material. So this is directly attached to the wall, um, builds this substrate layer, and of course has a growing layer, so the plant itself that grows on the substrate. And finally, the third option 
that would be that we have, in principle, the same thing. So also a substrate layer and a plant growing on that substrate. But this stuff is not directly attached to the wall, but there is a gap, an air gap between the wall and the substrate plant um, system. So that's what's used in, in most of the cases because uh, most um, times you would like to have a small ventilation or a small insulation between the building wall and um, the greening system, whatever brand you use for that building system. So Envimit is not attached to a certain brand of building systems. There are heaps on the market, but I think you can construct almost every available, commercially available uh, greening system using this approximation in Envimit. So what about the physics now? Because it's got a bit more complicated. So let's have a look at the, the, the Envimet model, how it looks like um, when we have an attached um, building greening system. So here over there, there is the wall. So that's the system we have just talked about with the outermost node, this is the facade of the wall. And now we have the additional layers, which consists of the substrate layers. And again, like in the case of the building wall, you can have three different um, substrate layers. They do not necessarily mean must be substrates. So it could also be that this layer C, for example, is a construction material. So some styrofoam, plastic, metal, or whatever you need to, con to, to um, fix the substrate onto the building system. And substrate B, and A, there could maybe be a layer of different kinds of um, substrate material as you like. You can also have different thicknesses so that you can construct a wide variety of different um, types of um, green systems. Then you do have a small layer of air between this substrate and the plant because the plant is not really growing directly on the substrate. So there is necessarily a small layer and then there is the vegetation layer of the plant itself. That also really depends on your plant and you can say how thick this substrate is, this vegetation layer is. So it is just a small moss wall with where you say one centimeter of moss covering the greening system or is it something with real plants, with flourish plants, so 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters. So whatever are your botanical ideas to, to use this greening system, they should be able to be modeled in Envimet. And there you use the um, database for the simple plants from the vegetation model to reassemble all the um, biological features of this layer. So that means what kind of plant is it? What is the color of the leaf? How does the plant behave? And so on and so on. So it's basically a combination of different things. So a combination of the vegetation model concerning the, the plant layer itself um, from the soil model to reassemble the properties of the growing substrate and finally of the building wall model to analyze what's happening inside the wall at the end or at the in interfaces of the wall. So it's pretty complex. So this greening model or the building wall model really uses a lot of Envimet knowledge, vegetation, substrate and building physics to generate this interesting information, but also very complex information concerning the, the greening properties of such a, a greening system. So what's going on? So this chart looks pretty complex, but no, don't worry. We're just briefly um, going into that because I just want to say um, that is a very strong modification of um, all meteorological variables that are we are experiencing when we thought thinking about a vegetation layer attached. So for example, in this scheme, I have no substrate, but I do have a, a greening layer close to the wall. And you see that every radiation, shortwave radiation from the sun, and also um, the infrared radiation coming from the um, thermal environment gets modified through this plant layer. So there are parts of the direct radiation which gets reflected directly by the greening layer depending on the structure of the vegetation layer and the color of the leaves. There are some parts that can be can penetrate through the vegetation layer. 
depending on the orientation of the leaves, the thickness of the layer, of course, and the properties of the plant. And then finally hit the wall, the building wall behind it. Of course, it's much less radiation than it was at the, at the incoming radiation saw. We have the same for the diffuse radiation. And also there is a, um, a progression from the direct radiation to diffuse radiation inside the green layer because the radiation gets scattered. So just to, to show you, this scheme is pretty complex. And this is the reason why everything is explained in this 30-page um, um, paper, part two. So if you're really into that, um, please have a look at it because there, everything is explained there with the equations and example data and so on. Okay, so, so far we have reached um, that part. So that would say, um, if you have questions and comments to this very first part, um, please just write them down in, in the chat and I will answer them. In the meantime, I'm setting up the, the EnviMet model so that we can move ahead for the um, analysis and the construction of these models inside of EnviMet. Okay, so not too many questions so far. Okay, so then let's let's dive into the um, second part. How to do it with with Ambimet. So I've constructed a, a really simple model. And actually, um, if you are um, going for the paper, uh, this is actually the, the model, the example model that has also been used in um, the paper. Um, so um, you can also will download it on our, our info page as a, as a case study. So it basically um, consists of just of seven buildings over here, not too large. So let's have a look at that just 10 meters high. So it's not really about the um, the, the layout. It's not about an urban case study of, of a good design. So it's just basically uh, setting up a model which um, has different types of, of building included. And each of these um, buildings we have set up here um, has a different building material. So um, as we move, um, if you open the, the info window in spaces, so we're in, in spaces right now, obviously, uh, there is the option that you um, open a small info window. So it's normally closed because um, it needs quite a room on the, on the monitor. But if you have a large monitor, which I haven't at the moment because it's hard to for the webinar to um, stream a large monitor. So um, we have a bit of competition of space. So. Um, but if you open that and you move with the mouse over this um, model area you have, you get a lot of information about the grid point, which is below your mouse, or in the case that you have a building, which is below the mouse, and you see all the, the information here. So I just will move over that building, for example. So that says that's building number four. It has no building name. It has a top of 10 meters, so I just mentioned that and has a wall material, a roof material, and a wall greening and a roof greening. We will talk about this later on. One thing that is probably um, interesting to know, because now as we are moving into building physics, Envimat needs to have a concept of what is a building. So that's not really necessary if we do just outdoor thermal comfort or if we just do outdoor microclimate simulation, because in this case, it's not really important. Is this building consisting of two parts, of three parts, or is it just a collection of pixel? Um, because basically the, the interactions that take place between the, the atmosphere and the building interface, uh, they don't care if it is just one building, two buildings, a section of buildings, or, or whatever. But for the building physics, it is important. 
Therefore, if you go to um, the building display, so you go on the, on the display top here in the spaces editor, let me just make that smaller here so we gain some more space. Um, so you see the, the default setting is that you see the building height in written in little numbers in the building, depending on your zoom factor. So if the zoom factor is high enough, then you see that written. So you know immediately, OK, this building has a height of 10 meters. But there is also a, a secondary op op option. You can see the building numbers. And here you see that um, all these um, pixels, all these grid cells, um, do have a concept that they are part of a building. So each of these um, grids knows that it is a part of a building which is called or which is numbered building number one or building number two, building number three, number four, and so on, up to, to building number seven. So in this way, we know this building number seven, where it is, of course, and what is the volume of that building, or it has it, uh, for example, a constant volume inside, or is it split it into several parts? So we can say, okay, we can select um, the building, but what we also can do, for example, if this building seems to be one building, but we know it's not true because maybe it came from, from a data set from somebody who did not really care if some built something is one building or is actually two buildings um, attached to each other, we can say, no, um, this is not one building. So I go to the mark, mark cell and I select just a row, select the cell, say this, for example, is not belonging to building number seven. So I mark all the cells that do not belong to building number seven and say, no, and now please separate this from my building number seven. And here we go. We have a new building number eight, which is individual, which of course has the same location, the same physical properties and so on, like the large building, original building number seven. But now, for example, has an individual air volume inside so that all the physical interactions for the building energy stimulation are no. Okay, we have one volume of air here, which is enclosed by building number eight and its facades. And we have another volume of air, which is um, belonging to building number seven with its facades. And these two volumes are independent from each other. We can, of course, um, remark on the building and say, OK, join them back again. So then again, they are, uh, didn't work. I have to redo that. This one and say join. So then they are back one common building. So now what about the materials? Um, so this was about um, the concept of building logic. So the building name is not given. So um, def definitely for the building energy simulation, um, the building name doesn't have a big influence, but it may be of use if you have a larger project and you want to have more information than just the building number. Um, so if you import um, GIS data, for example, for, from OpenStreetMap or from a shapefile, or if you use the QGIS um, plugin where there is a building name supported because it's in the data set, it's in the geo data set, it says, oh, this is Empire State Building. This is, um, I don't know, Manhattan Trade Center or whatever. Um, this name is taken over, and you can also find it in the output file. So in, as additional information, it's not just called building number five, but then it's maybe called um, Empire State Building, for example, or whatever name it has. But it's just an, an fancy information to make life easier for you. So now what about um, the building materials? So as I just said, the greening system, or the, if we want to use a green system, consists of two information. We do have um, the wall of the building with its physical properties stored in the database. And we have the greening of the wall with its information stored in, stored in the database. So um, if we move over here, we have this information stored here. You see this little icon here. So this is the material of um, the, the facade material of the building. And this is the material that is used for the roof of the building. So if we move over to um, building number seven, for example, we see um, that the wall material from the database used here is a default wall with a moderate isolation. 
And we also used the same uh, material for the roof, although it's called default wall, it's a material that could be used um, for different things. And we use um, this material for all the buildings. So all the, the walls of these buildings are the same. So why? It seems a bit boring to have all the same material. No, because this uh, simulation is about the effects of the greeny layer. So basically where would not mix up the effects of different um, physical properties of the walls and different physical properties of the green. So this is why all the buildings in this example do have the same um, physical property. Um, so if you want to know what is this physical property of yours, obviously you need to go to the um, database manager um, to um, see what's inside. So also in the uh, 3D view, you can easily see the different materials and you also now can easily see uh, there is a difference and you see the different greening, the different colors, the different shades of green. So this is what we have added here. So these buildings do have uh, different um, types of um, facade greening applied. So this building here, all have the same size, all have the same wall materials. It's completely non -using, not using any kind of um, building greening. And these um, six other buildings do have different kinds of facade greening. So which kinds of facade greening did they use? Let's go to building five and six. And here you see on this information here, on um, the information that you see, okay, this is the facade greening type and this is the roof greening type. And if you move over here, you see there is nothing, it's just empty because no greening is applied. If you move over to number building five, you see there is a greening layer, which is called only green. That's the same here. There is a green layer, which is called green plus a sandy loam substrate. So this is a greening plus a substrate. And building number one and building two do have a green loam sand with an air gap. We just don't see that because um, there's not enough space to show that. But if I open the information window, we see the differences here. So as I said, our space is a bit short here, um, loamy sense, yeah. So these are, there are different um, sub substrates used. And of course you can change um, the materials because you have a, have a drum, drop down box here and you can select on um, the different kinds of facade greening available. We have greenings uh, with an air gap. We have greenings without an air gap. We have different Things. So these are the two that are used in this project. And these are the two which are used um, for the other one here, loam substrate and a sandy substrate. And if you want to apply one of the facade buildings, we can um, select it here and click on this building and say, using the right mouse, apply greenings. And then the greening we have selected here is applied to that building. So as you see here, we have selected and selected buildings so that we see the differences here. So here we are. And so this is how, how it basically works. Of course, um, we are right now in the um, in the very simple mode. So you know there are two modes in envymet and if you are working on on building physics it might be very important to know the the differences between these two nodes so the mode number one this is on the basic the the usual node we have um this is called the um 2.5d mode so that's a rather simple mode which does not offer any balconies um complex kinds of holes, overlapping of buildings, and so on, and so on, which is very easy to digitize. And it's very easy to obtain these data, for example, from footprint data plus an additional height information. So this is why it's called 2.5D, because it's basically a footprint of the building plus an additional height information. But if we want to be more precise and we want to have more features for the building, so to say, oh, I want to have um, different physical materials, I want to have windows, doors, 
I do not want to have the complete building being either greened or not greened, which is the case in 2.5D. So I can apply a material to a building. Um, uh, remove, go back to from a cursive mark, I don't need that anymore. So I can apply a facade material, a roof material, a greening, a roof greening, and a facade greening to one to the building, to the complete building. So that means that all grids or facades belonging to building number four, for example, will have the same material and the same greening. That's okay, but it's probably not accurate enough. So if you want to have it more accurate, you probably have known that there is the option to convert the model into a detailed design model. So that means that on the 2.5 easy mode will be converted to a full 3D model. I'll just do that. Let's just give you a warning because it's a fundamental change um, of model. So of course the model doesn't change in the first glance, but if you go to, to 3D mode afterwards, and I uh, already so started destroying my buildings. Um, go to um, this building, for example. So I just need to turn on the, the, the way. Then you see I have the option to set an individual segment. So you see the cursor here. And I will just um, clap that in. And you can, for example, um, for the moment, everything is default wall, moderate isolation is written down here. And so if you want to have a window here, you can say, oh, I want as a material going to, to glass and select, um, I don't know, heat protection glass or um, grid glass bricks or whatever you like. And then I'll apply those information. Oops, sorry, I'm still in real selection mode. <clears throat> So apply this individual materials here. Oh, I'm still applying greenings. So I also have a greening here applied. So I will just make no greening here, please. I want a window. Um, most windows do not have a facade greening in front of it, at least not intentionally. So you can have individual materials and also an individual greening. So just uh, place the, the window and I'll say, okay, I want a facade greening. And I don't want that complete building to be covered with um, green. So I just select um, the locations where the greening panels should be located. So this is of course a bit um, more work and you definitely do not want to do this for a larger area size model with, I don't know, 5,000 buildings or so, but you maybe want to do that for a number of buildings of interest in your simulation, because you probably also do not want to make a full energy, building energy analysis for 2,000 or 5,000 buildings, but for a set of selected buildings. And for these selected buildings, it could be a good idea. It would make totally sense to, to go more into detail and to adjust more the materials and make them more precisely looking like the building is looking in reality or the building is supposed to, to look in reality. But well, for this um, simple example, we have not used that feature. So for this simple example, our model contains just one building without greening and some buildings with different kinds of green. So the remains are the same like in every environment in simulation. So we save this INX file, we create a SIMX file, which is completely the same like um, it has been done for um, the other examples we already did last week for the water spray or ex exactly the same procedure as is shown in our different tutorial videos on the website. One feature that might be of interest, we're not going to dive deeply into that because there's another hour at least of topic, is that some people would like to run an energy simulation model afterwards. So they would like to use EnviMet um, to generate the boundary conditions to, to generate urbanized weather data for their building because they know, oh, this building is neighbored by other buildings that do influence my microclimate conditions, solar radiation, wind field, and so on, and so on, and so on. So um, I would like to have, I would like to run my energy simulation model, like energy plus or whatever you like, transits or, or whatever. And I want to feed this energy 
the energy balance model, energy building MSU model with modified boundary conditions. And EnviMet offers you the option to generate those boundary conditions for you as a text file. So you do not need after the simulation to go with a mouse over in Leonardo and collect every pieces of um, information. You can just click the right mouse and say, add this building to BPS, so building performance simulation output. And that means once you have done that, this building, and you can do this for every building, of course, uh, this building will get another extra file. And this extra file is a text file giving you um, information about the microclimate at the north, south, west, and east facing facades. And these comma separated value files can then be imported into energy plus or other um, energy models to use these modified boundary conditions for the building to get a more accurate internal building stimulation there yeah but for us now at the moment we are just focusing at the interface we're focusing what's going on at, at the wall and how can i see that in leonardo so Everything is baked and the simulation has been run. So it does just take uh, 20 hours or so. So it has been done overnight on a very simple PC. So it's not a really large model. So I just grabbed the, the outputs and loaded them into Leonardo. It's the same procedure like, like everywhere. So you um, do select the, the files, uh, the output files, the input files. So in this case, um, I have selected the green case. I also did a, the non-green case, but um, there it is. So just select uh, one timesheet. So that's um, green, the green case. And in the green case, there is the building output folder. And just um, select the timesheet. So we do a very um, fine simulation. So we used outputs for, for every, um, I think it's 30, 30 minutes or 15 minutes even. So it's a very high resolution information. And we do use the facade data to see um, the information. And you know, this is the little box here. So we're, we're skipping the atmospheric data for the moment because right now we are not too much interested in the um, output performance as far as the microclimate around the building is concerned. So we go to facade in 3D and there is a huge number, huge number of information available. For example, you can see the information, what is the air temperature in front of the wall system? So we're extracting the, these data here. Again, we're a bit um, short on space. So I would just clip that. So for example, this is the building on what the air temperature in front of the building system. So um, you do see that there are differences. So remember, this was the building without um, any insulation. Um, so this was for, this for one thing. Um, but we can also navigate into the building physics. So that's uh, we are interested in. And depending on what kind of information you have, you have really heaps of information about the, the radiation absorbed, about the sensible heat going from the wall system. And you also do have, we come to that in, in, in a minute, on the different nodes we have just talked about, these seven nodes which are consisting the wall system. So facade node number one to facade number seven. And you also have the same thing for the greening system a lot of information, the temperature of the leaves, the radiation in front of the greening system, the long wave radiation absorbed by the greening system, and so on, the transpiration flux, the stomata behavior. So everything that is supported by the plant model is also um, available in this output. And of course, if you do have um, a substrate or this at least one building in the model who has a substrate layer, a greening with a substrate layer, we also get all the information about the conditions of the substrate. So the different node temperatures, radiation as absorbed, the air temperature in front of the substrate. So that allows you really, really to jump deeply into the, the physics of almost everything um, to analyze how the system behaves. You do not need to do that. You just can have a look at the wall figures. But if you want to understand how does it happen or how does, what is the effect exactly of my greening system and which are the parameters I might not need to tune, 
this is the place where you normally go to dive in and see how these little these different parameters are changing. So just let ha let's have a look at the building wall because we were talking about uh, building walls, uh, building physics, not about facade green physics. So just move on over to or move back to um, the wall system here and have a look at the temperature of the node one, which is the outside node, or in other terms, the facade, the outside facade. Just say um, extract that data. Takes six a moment because it's a pretty large file, obviously, with all the, the data in it. Um, yeah, you see. Okay, come come and move. So I just want to have the legend here. Okay, here we are. <laughs> So for here, for example, you see the, the temperature of the facade range from over 50 degrees centigrade down to 24 degree centigrade. And here you now you see um, the differences in the effects of the different facade layers, the dif dif different facade greenings we have applied. So this was our building absolutely without any facade greening. So you see, this is the hottest building, especially here, the, the south orientated facade is pretty hot, 50 degrees centigrade. Of course, the northern facade is a lot more homogeneous because there is no solar direct solar radiation. And you see then we have um, these um, six buildings uh, who have different kinds of um, greening applied with substrate, without substrate and different plants. And you see the, the coolest one, this is that one here, over here has um, a facade temperature that was not going above 24 degrees. So almost half only the value of the building which has no um, facade greening at all. So that's pretty um, impressive. Of course, um, the maximum effect can be seen on the, on the south facade um, at noon. And um, also the uh, effects for the roofs are, are similar depending on what kind of greenery, greenery you have um, applied to, to the model. So maybe we have one deeper look and maybe go to, to this building here. And you see um, if we are in 3D mode and we are um, moving closely enough to the building, you see you have the option to, to mark a facade segment and so maybe we choose this facade segment here. Uh, you can also see the, the data the information about the facade segment here. So for example, here we have um, um, a temperature of the wall about 46 degrees centigrade. But if we click on the right mouse and we do have a set of data available. So, so we have a set of data available starting at five in the morning, going over a complete day ending at five on the morning of the next day. So not just one file, it doesn't work obviously with one file. So if we have several files, you can click with the right mouse onto a segment. And then it says I'm collecting data. So it goes into each of the files you do have available in your building folder and collects all the information that are stored for this very selected segment. So it generates a time series, so it's the same concept we do have for a ground surface. We can also do this for a wall or a roof system. So I'm a bit too large for my screen, so I make it a little shorter. So uh, maybe you have seen the um, facade explorer or uh, the um, data explorer already. So this is the um, G, the GUI for exploring um, time series. So on this side here, do have um, the available range of data. And what we normally do is to press the right mouse um, and say, I just set the time series to a whole range. So whatever is available as a simulation time step from the very beginning up to the very end, please use that in the diagram. Where is the diagram? Not here yet, because I have not selected a variable or a set of variables to be displayed. And you see there are really a lot of variables in the building files. So what I wanted to see is the building temperature of the facade. So again, I choose this node here, node one, zero, so outside. Sometimes it's coding with a zero, sometimes with a one, so that has been changed a bit. But it's clear this is the outside node, this is the facade. And then you see the daily um, progression of the facade temperature starting with 18 
um, degrees centigrade in the morning. I'm rising up to 48 for this specific segment on the on the northern uh, on the southern um, facade, and then going down during the night time. So that's the amplitude of um, temperature for the outside of the wall. So we can also dive or go into the wall itself by using the nodes one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we are progressing inside the walls, starting from the outer facade, in moving towards the inner of the building. So this is node number two, very similar. Because we have, of course, to remember what are these two nodes. These are two nodes which are in the plaster of the building, so a very thin layer. Also, node number two is still in the plaster of the layer. So there's almost no difference between the inner parts of this um, plaster and the outer parts. Node number three. Now, this is uh, the next material, which is um, constructed, which is an insulation material. And obviously, it behaves completely different. So heat is not transported into the inner parts, so, although the outer parts are 46 degrees. On the inner parts are just 30 degrees. And if we move even deeper, the next isolation layer inside the building, we're just reaching 22 degrees. And you also see the, the law of physics, um, so the Fourier transformation of heat, that the peak is also shifting. So while the peak was here almost in, at noon, it's there in the early afternoon. And the peak for the next node in the war is even later in the day. And as we progress, through the night, uh, through the day, into the uh, deeper into the wall, we see that there is only very little change. And this finally is the node number seven, or node number six, depending on how we count it, which is called inside. So this is the change of temperature at the inner wall of that specific building. So just keep that in mind. And now let's have a look at um, the dynamics um, of a green building. So. Close that or move over to um, one of the greener buildings. So, for example, that one here, which is pretty green or pretty cool because it has a lot of greenery. We do the same thing. So, we select the point which is more or less at the same position of the facade. It doesn't matter if it's really exactly the same position. And let's have a look how the wall temperature behaves here. So, also again, it collects um, some of the data. Um, this could also take a lot of time, depending on how large your building system is. Again, we are selecting the whole range and just move straight into looking at the, the wall, node number one, so the, out, number two, the outside. So you see the curve is the same from the form, from the geometrical form, but the value is much lower. It's just reaching 28 degrees or 27.5 degrees because all of the shading effects that take place of the green layer and probably of the substrate layer as well. And so you see all these insulation effects carries through the model system. So these are our nice few nodes again in, in the plaster in the outer layer. And then of course, cause the um, other layers follow up until we're in the lowest building. And you see it's all almost very small variation you see on um, the, the dashes here are now half a centigrade. So it's just moving from 20 degrees centigrade up to, I don't know, yeah, it's 21. So this inner wall temperature of this building with a green cover raises from 20 to 21 um, in the morning hours. And just remember the situation here for the non-isolated building, just as a, as a reminder, was completely different, um, not from the general um, geometrical form of the curves, but um, referring to the absolute values available. So I just uh, collecting the data from that building again. So I put it to the whole range and have a look just at the, the inner node. Oops. So that one, that's one here. I see the inner, this is just the inner node. So I can show you the whole system. So, so you don't think I'm cheating you. Um, so this is the inner node. And you see it's progressing. So I'm turning off the other one so that we can see the behavior of the inner node better. So you see it's progressing from 20 degrees. So the, the start value is, of course, the same for all the buildings. It's going up to 23.5 degrees. So you see the green building just got the maximum 
wall, inner wall temperature of 21 degrees centigrade and the non-green building got up to 23.2 degrees in the early morning when you are trying to sleep. So that's a difference of about 2.2 Kelvin just in the inner side of the building created or generated um, by the greening layer. So you see, there are really a lot of other things you can have a look at, all the variables, you can plot them and so on and so on. You can also um, just do this as a final thing, um, export them to, to Python. I just want to show you that because some people are um, saying it's not working yet. If you say send it to Data Studio, it will pack you a file and send it and generate a script for that. Um, sorry. That's a problem with the screen, which is pretty small. Just trying to, to save this um, to make it sizable. Well, that could be difficult. All right, oh, I got it. Just give me a second to make it smaller on the bigger screen. That's a problem when if you work with two screens at the same time. So here we are. Well, it says, oh, it gets, an, gets me an error message. So this is a script that has been generated by EnvyMed and trying to, to plot your, exactly the same plot you have just seen the Data Explorer and plot that to um, Python and say that it's a, an error. It's not working correctly. Now, please, if you use Python, you have to, to read what the Python output says. And it says just module not found matplotlib. So we need the uh, default values, uh, the default modules. So we need, if this is a fresh installation, um, actually, um, we do not have installed all the Python modules because it's better if you download the Python modules um, at the very first stage. So um, if you go to the first page, you see this info and says, oh, there are some defaults package missing. So you just press this info button and then it just downloads the recent version of pandas, the recent version of matplotlib, the recent version of numpy. Yeah, that's basically the, the packages uh, which are required for most of the EnvyMed script. So of course you do need that because there is no way around that. So if you have an external script, you have an external Python script, you want to run that in EnvyMed. Um, of course you have to check if the packages used there are actually installed in your Python distribution shipped with with EnvyMed. So um, um, it's all you have to do is just to press this button if it's just the default packages and EnvyMed will, will do all the stuff for you and download it and install it into the um, data studio. Of course, it, it takes some time. Um, yeah, we have already almost finished, but we'll still take, of course, some, some questions afterwards. So just taking that because some people are missing that say, oh, there are, EnvyMed, there are packages missing. So once that is finished and it's installed, we can go back to the script and restart it and hopefully uh, won't get an error message um, again. So no, it's starting the Python script. It's taking the data. So it's just completely uh, finished for you. You don't need to do anything. You just press the button and you see you get exactly the Python diagram, the Python script to generate exactly the diagram you have just used um, in EnvyMed. So if you don't believe me, I can just uh, make a, a horrible diagram without any sense, just to show it's exactly the diagram that has been, um, that you compose over here in the Map Explorer is exactly the diagram that Python will generate for you. If it makes sense or not, that's of course completely up to you. Okay, so um, I think we have finished that. So I will just clean up my, my screen. And so that we can um, move on maybe to the, the question and answer section. So I will just move over to the, to, to the chat. I'll just move my camera a bit because I have to go to the second screen. So I already see a number of, of comments over here. Um, oh, this probably was a question from the first section part. Um, yeah, thank you for your insight, Emmerich. When do we get Unix-based installation of Ambimet and to run Ambimet in the cloud? Um, well, probably it would, there will be a Unix-based version um, in the future, but I cannot tell you when it exactly will, will happen. Where can I find all the math behind them? Well, yeah, 
that's what I just said. This is, these are the two, in this case, uh, the two, these two papers um, exactly for the facade model, which are now in the e-library. Um, but as I said, not everything is in the e-library right now because we are reworking a lot of papers. Um, but that's also written in the top of the e-library. If you go to the, the info page, oh, we just can, can, can do that. Oops. So just give me a second. Um, yep. So, so if you go to info, so not .com, but info, and then you go uh, move over to the e-library. Uh, then you do have the reworked papers. So these are the reworked papers. You also have um, the thesis from my uh, PhD students. Um, latest one from Tim Zinsel and the other latest one from Helge Siemer. So this is really a big combination of um, everything of the math, um, what's in it. You see my original thesis, it's in German, unfortunately, and the from Sebastian Hüttner, which is all a bit outdated because everything about the math is in it. But if you're not happy with that one, you can see also go to my research gate um, profile um, where you find all the um, journal papers and about different stuff. So if you want to have the most recent information um, also about different topics like IVS system, um, fractal plants, um, radiation transmission in the um, plant system, then you probably find the paper of interest there where all the maths are in. Okay, congratulations for the job. Oh, no, thanks. <laughs> Interrupt to evaluate different types of facades, just um, DSF or kinetic one. Uh, well, the, uh, the kinetic, kinetic facades, of course, are very pretty complex because you wouldn't need to have a, a, a sub model to simulate the behavior of this kinetic facade. So, um, at the moment, not. So these facades are not supposed to change their state or their physical behavior, but maybe in a, in a later version. So maybe we can pro provide the option to call a Python script, but um, you know, calling Python scripts in a simulation is a very critical thing because they're very, very, very slow. And the simulation would take much more time to do, to investigate that. Um, how does an open window configuration in a building where you obviously uh, well you can do that yes um, you can uh, you cannot open and close windows during the simulation of course not um, but you can have a semi open space like an atrium or a lobby or something like that and simulate that um, but you have to use the um, the single wall system components so you know to make a building or parts of the building composed out of single walls and then you can have a semi open space or like a bus stop or something where the wind can can penetrate yes yes that's that's possible but it has a a bit of an, an experimental um, character you have to be aware of that is PPS switched on for a building that are what other climates and very are available? Uh, there is no special resolution in the BPS file. It's just collecting the microclimate data in front of the facade of the selected building. So from the north facade, south facade, and, and so on and so on. And it's exactly the the, the atmospheric atmospheric grid which is just in front of the facade. So there is no spatial resolution. So the spatial res resolution is the resolution of your NVMet model. So if you have a resolution of two meters, um, the atmospheric variables are defined one meter ahead away from the from the facade because they are defined in the in the center of the model grid. Is a recording? Yes, of course. So we always do recordings. Um, not to the subject of the day, but on the wall parameters you string, I didn't see the pressure coefficient to calculate the natural um ventilation and uh, no we do not do calculate ventilation inside the building so our buildings are hollow yes they do have an air volume but we do not make um we don't let wind progress into the building so that's, that's we cannot say what this is the for ventilation um but you can do um make um, your own calculations because in the atmospheric file you see the pressure in front of the facade so the the, the pressure distribution 
It's actually not in the building file you're right, but it's in the atmosphere file. So in the atmosphere file, you have the variable um, pressure in front, pre relative pressure in front of the building facade. But remember, it's a gridded model and the pressure coefficients are very sensible for the building form and size. And so they could probably be a bit, a bit tricky to um, use that one. Um, can you show the time? Uh, the time changes on the model. Um, I'm not quite sure what you mean. Can you show the time temperature changes on the model? You mean the, the atmospheric um, variable. So the atmospheric variables are of course not in the in this um get a bit smaller there. Of course I can go and uh, navigate to the the 3D model, yeah, okay. You want to see it in the 3D model, yes. Of ah, okay, I understand. Yeah, it's of course tricky. Um, I can open the atmosphere file as well for a selected um, time series. So I just move to go to my um, data explorer and go to the, oh, sorry, make it a bit bigger. I forgot to see it just partly. Um, go to the atmosphere folder and select um, <clears throat> time step, and it's 7 o'clock. So just like the same procedure as you normally do for a 2D model. And then I select, for example, air temperature as a data. Here you see the, the, the pressure perturbation, which was just mentioned. So this would be um, the variable to use if you want to go, <clears throat> sorry, for um, the ventilation coefficients. So but now we're talking about the air temperature. I just say extract that to 3D. And of course, it's always a question, how can I visualize a complete 3D data field in any case? <coughs> Sorry. So um, if I turn on um, the complete um, 3D layer, so you obviously won't see anything. Um, so you have to do some cuts. Just move outside a bit. So now you obviously see the complete um, model data, and so um, you don't actually see a, a lot of things anyway. So um, you have to make a, your, your selection. So for example, you can say, okay, I just want to cut, uh, see the, the information, the data information, the infraspheric information, it's just up to a, a certain level. So then you can say for the data layer, 3D settings, or for example, um, just show me um, the data which are on the z-axis between level zero and say level number five. So then you do have a cut. Can move in here forward. Oops, sorry, I didn't want that. I just wanted to move forward. So that's maybe maybe one option. So you can also say I want to make a, a, a thin cut. Well, sorry, that was wrong. Um, just level one, or <clears throat> having different levels moving moving upwards and seeing the the air temperature at the different levels or going going downward. Or another option is to say, okay, I want the, the complete thing, um, but I only want temperatures which are um, between 28 and, or say it's just between 30 degrees and 33 degrees. So that's another option to select some grid cells. So you must do a selection. If you display all the grid cells at once, you don't see anything. Um, but you can see, okay, we just still want all the grid cells at once. Um, but I want to make them a bit um, transparent. So there's another option maybe to play around with. Um, I don't see much of that. It's too transparent. Not 27, 60, 29. And also maybe reduce the data cube size a bit. So there are different ways to manage this task, this graphical task in the end to combine. I want to still see, want to see the temperature of the buildings. I want to see the positions of the building, but I want to see air temperature or wind speed or whatever variable you like at, at the same time. So just walking over to um, the next question over here. 
Uh, okay, then yes, I'm closing just going to finish. It's possible to run longer simulations. Yes, of course, if you uh, have enough time, you can run a whole year simulation, but you can also split it over different PCs and glue the things together. How do we find the average temperature of the complete model area? Well, you can use Python script in Data Studio and um, get your average in. There are some examples. Um, when you open Data Studio, there are some script examples. And how to can I get a net CDF um, for Paraview? Yeah, you have to enable net CDF out view. You have to go to the NV guide, and there in the output section, there is a box, and it says, yes, I do want um, net, net CDF as an output, additional output file, and then you will get an additional output file in, in net CDF as well. OK, yes, thank you all. Um, it's just five minutes over time. So um, I hope to gain a bit of insight. So have a look at the papers. Uh, I'll redo the recording, and I look forward to see you in two weeks or four weeks or whatever you like. So thank you very much.